going to the DXY, let's see what the dollar's doing here, and the dollar continues to drop lower here. The, the level, again, was dead on. We had these pivots going all the way back. There was your top right there. We, we are now on one, two, three, four, five, six. Today would be our seventh, check that, sixth down day in a row following the top pivot. We are coming into a time count tomorrow. If the dollar is down today decently, right now it's basically flat to lower, but if we're down decently, I would dare say we could be looking at a bounce in the dollar tomorrow based on a time count. Time counts I dis dis dissect and teach in my winning trader series at verifiedinvesting.com. All right, a couple things here. So we just touched on the dollar, the dollar coming in, yields coming in, that's short-term bullish. Remember, just last week, I started going bullish on the stock market. I said, guys, it's looking like we're gonna get a bounce. If we flip over to the SPY, the chart on the SPY was telling us just that. I've kind of simplified it here, but just to rehash, we had this major level right across here, right? We talked about that, we had our parallel lines, we came right down to it. Look at what the S&P has done here. It has rallied back. Now, the important thing on this chart and why I've simplified it and gotten rid of those other lines is because what I want to do is I'm focusing in on this pattern. Look at yesterday. We saw yesterday that this beautiful head and shoulders, the market had broken, which means it triggered. Head and shoulders trigger when the neckline, this yellow line is the neckline. It connects basically through the armpit right here. That's how you create a neckline in a head and shoulders pattern. It broke. Yesterday, we pierced the line to negate a head and shoulder pattern. You must close above it. Okay, we did not close above it yesterday. So again, the question I have today is, do we close above it? If we negate the head and shoulders pattern, you at least are going to fill this gap here. I think, again, you probably will come down uh, or rally further higher into this general vicinity up here. This trend line from the top of the head to the shoulder. Now, again, I explained yesterday, the market sentiment is such an important driving factor in the markets. When we were down here, the sentiment was insanely bearish. The markets had basically dropped 7 to 8% in a straight line. Everyone was freaking out. What was I doing in these game plans? What was I giving in terms of trades to members in, in, in verified investing alerts at inthemoneystocks.com? I was having longs. We were going long, 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 long. Because again, the charts on these stocks were telling us, and the S&P was telling us to expect a rally. In addition, we had the yield topping out and the dollar topping out. Both of those, if they pull back, are bullish for the markets. Now, if you ask me again, how long am I bullish for from this low? I would say one to two weeks, right? So we're already almost a week in at this point on the rally. So maybe we head up to here, we will see. I will tell you this, my bigger macro period, remember when we go to bigger time frames. so the daily told us a one to two week bounce, so far that's working perfectly. Now we go to a bigger time frame, and the bigger time frame is still bearish. Lower highs, lower lows, that is still intact. The bigger time frames tell us we're going down further. We just had to get some bulls back on board. You had to convince people that, hey, this is another buy the dip opportunity, run right into it. That's what we need for the markets to be able to roll over because those people will have to sell, right? And that creates downward pressure. So again, that's really important. So I want to see, does the head and shoulders pattern fail? If it does, that's going to be one of the catalysts to get people to be bullish. That's okay. Let's ride it. I still have longs out there. Now, I did take some longs off the table yesterday. Uh, in, in For members at InTheMoneyStocks.com, we had Roku, over 10% gain there, and that was just in a couple days. And SEDG, which I highlighted in yesterday's game plan, ripped so much yesterday, I decided to take that off with members as well. Two amazing winners just continuing our streak of winners at InTheMoneyStocks.com's verified investing alerts. Okay, so ultimately, what am I going to do here? As we rally up, I'm going to begin to short the market. We're going to continue to take positions off the table. All right, if you looked at Dollar General yesterday, that rallied. I highly that. Square, we'll go to that chart in just one second. Disney's continued to be a, a monster. All of these charts have been rallying up, which is awesome. But again, I'm a swing trader. So as we get up towards these upper levels that I dissected, somewhere in this vicinity, I'm going to begin to short the market again. This is what it is, swinging. Swing trading is like a dance. You're dancing one way, you're dancing the other. I'm not going to dance much more than that because I don't want to embarrass myself. But the key is this, right? You have to be able to maneuver and see what the charts are telling you. You're not always going to be right. Is it possible I short here and we go all the way up here? Of course it is. 
but the key is its position size. You start inching in here, you inch a little bit more on the way up, and you build your core position as long as the high pivot stays intact. And that is how you maneuver in, you dance in, you dance out.